Hi, I'm Darren from Digital Photography School and today I want to talk a little bit about my first impressions of a camera that I've wanted to test for a long time now, the Leica M9P. Um, it's a camera that polarizes people and I know even the last few days as I've tweeted about it and talked about it on Google Plus and Facebook, uh, people's reactions to it have been uh, quite diverse. Uh, one of the main reasons that it does polarize people is its price. The body of this camera, just the body itself, costs around eight thousand US dollars. Um, the lenses that you can buy from it uh, range from a minimum of around twelve hundred dollars. This is for a new lens, up to ten thousand dollars. So you can end up spending a whole heap more on the lens and the actual body itself and if you want to buy more than one lens and many Leica users do you can end up spending ten twenty thirty thousand dollars on lenses if you're a real enthusiast so a camera of that price you would think would have incredible features um, but the reality is it doesn't when you compare it to a modern digital SLR even an entry level digital SLR you may think actually has more features than this Leica M9. Um, so it polarizes people and I guess I've, for that reason I've wanted to test it for myself and to actually see what is this camera that people either love or hate and when they love it, they do love it. What had I heard about this camera from uh, enthusiasts? Well really the people I've talked to who love this camera over the years or, or its sibling the M9 um, talk about it almost in magical terms, in wondrous terms. They, they talk about the images that it takes, this quality that is almost like art that, that is, is quite amazing. And so um, having heard that and having seen some of the images that these people take, um, I've always wanted to test it for myself. So let's talk a little bit about, um, let's start with this model itself. This is the M9P. Uh, it's relatively new. It has a sibling called the M9. The P on this uh, stands for professional and really uh, it's not that different to the M9. Um, the, one of the main differences is it doesn't have like a red dot on it. Um, P it's supposed to be professional. It's supposed to be perhaps a little bit less um, out there. Uh, it's supposed to blend into the background a little bit more and be uh, a, a little bit less obtrusive perhaps. So it doesn't have the red dot. Um, it doesn't have um, it, it has an, inscri an inscription up the top here that says what camera it is. Uh, the, the LCD on the back has a hardened uh, cover on it, uh, sapphire crystal I think they call it. Um, so it's not uh, meant to scratch and certainly this test model hasn't got any scratches on it uh, and I'm sure it's been around the traps a little bit. Um, so it's not overly different, there's not a heap uh, about it. Uh, it has a slightly different cover here. The leather, uh, well it's not actually leather but it looks like that's a non-slip version whereas the N9 perhaps didn't have that. But apart from that it's not a whole heap different from the N9 apart from the price tag. You can add another thousand dollars for those features to the price. Um, other than that it's an 18 me megapixel camera. Um, it has a full frame sensor similar to the 5D Mark II that I'm shooting with as my regular camera. So the resolution is great, the image sensor is, is quite large. Um, and apart from that, you can find the specs of it online. Um, in terms of what it doesn't have uh, when you compare it to pretty much an entry level digital SLR these days, there's quite a bit. Uh, this camera shoots in manual focus, it doesn't have any auto focusing whatsoever. Uh, it doesn't have face recognition, focusing, or anything along those lines. It's all manual. And you control your focusing from this ring at the bottom of the camera. It has a little um, little lever on the side there to actually help you to do that. Um, the focusing is all through the viewfinder. There's no live preview via the, uh, the LCD, so you can't you know, hold it up and be focusing it. You actually have to look through the viewfinder. The system for focusing takes a little while to get used to. Um, it's not visual. Uh, it's not just a, you know that you look through and oh that's in focus. You look through and inside there's this little square in the middle of it, and in that square, uh, that's where you need to find the focus. And, and and when it's out of focus, you'll see two versions of the the um, the scene in front of you. And when those images come together and whether they look in focus to you, that's when the lens is in focus. Um, so it's similar to 
if you go cross-eyed, you quite often will see two versions of the scene in front of you, but then you come out of being cross-eyed, everything is crystal clear. It's the same sort of thing in terms of what you're seeing in there. Um, being a rangefinder camera, what you see through the viewfinder is slightly different to what is uh, being seen by the lens. What you view th through the viewfinder comes out of this side here, so you're not actually seeing exactly what the lens is seeing, uh, both in terms of focus but also the composition. So that takes a little while to get used to as well. When you look through the viewfinder, you do see a frame um, superimposed there for you to give you a guide as to where things are, but um, it's not quite exactly the same. There's no video on this, there's no face recognition, no priority view, uh, uh, sorry, live view. There's, uh, uh, there is a continuous shooting mode, but it only shoots at two, sec two frames per second, which is a lot slower than uh, perhaps uh, your digital SLR shoots. So depending on the type of photography you do, that could be an issue as well. Um, the LCD, the quality of the images that you see on your LCD, aren't really that great in comparison to you know my three inch uh, screen on the back of my 5D Mark II. Um, but when you actually get the images on your computer, there's a, uh, there is a, a difference and the quality is there. So it's not really that useful for working out how you've exposed your shot. It's more for framing and you can look at the histogram. But um, yeah, apart from that, I, I'm not overly impressed by the LCD and the quality of what you, what you see on there. I, I hope they do upgrade that. So there's a lot of things missing from this camera in, in, in terms of what we're used to on a modern camera. But it's those things that are missing that enthusiasts, like or enthusiasts, actually love. And uh, I have to say I, I agree with them in many ways. There's a whole heap of stuff missing from this, but the basics are there. The basics of a good, well-exposed camera are there. You've got shutter speed, which is controlled from this dial on top. Um, it has aperture control from the lens itself, and it has ISO, which is controlled from a menu on the back. White balance can be controlled as well. You can shoot in RAW so you can manipulate white balance and that type of thing later as well. So the basics are there. And uh, for me, that's actually something that I've enjoyed this week. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned is that you can shoot in aperture priority mode, which allows you to set the aperture and then it will select the corresponding shutter speed for you. So there is, I guess, a semi-automatic mode there, which could be quite useful to you. I've actually used it quite a bit myself this week. So there's a whole heap missing, and for a very expensive camera, that obviously puts a lot of people off. My experience of this camera this week um, the first few hours that I shot with it, I was incredibly frustrated. Um, the focusing system, not that it's manual focusing, but just that, you know, as I described earlier, the actual method of focusing, I found that quite cumbersome, quite slow, um, and I found it difficult with glasses on as well. It's actually taken me even a day or two to really work out how to hold this camera in relation to, to my eyes and, and, and actually how to get that right. And I think I've got it now. So the first few hours were quite frustrating. Um, some of my first photos on this camera, I attempted to take shots of my kids. And my kids are all under five. I have three under five and they don't stop moving. And so that was quite difficult to actually get them to stand still enough so that I could get them in focus. And so I do have quite a few out of focus shots from that, that first session. Um, but I've got faster with the focusing over the last few days. And I've got better, I guess, at thinking about the composition and even the use of this lens, a 35mm lens, uh, f2, um, isn't really a focal length that I shoot a lot with on my SLR. I tend to zoom a little bit more and use longer focal lengths. So that's kind of taken me a little bit to get my head around. So the learning curve was there and it was frustrating when I started, but I'm really enjoying it now. Um, I'm really enjoying the back to basics uh, nature of this camera. I'm really enjoying not being able to rely upon auto focusing or auto exposure or any of those sorts of things but to strip it all back again. Now having said that I could do that on my SLR, I could put it fully in manual mode, I could put it in manual focus, but there's just something about this that's really taken me back to basics and it slowed me down in terms of the way I'm taking my photos. I'm taking a whole heap less photos than I would if on an average session with my 5D but I think my photos are more considered. Uh, I have to slow down just to focus this thing. Um, and so that's kind of been nice for me. The quality of the images 
I don't really know how to describe it except that they are amazing and, and uh, I've really enjoyed that. Um, I've been taking a lot of portraits with this, a lot of shots of things around the house. I'm kind of housebound at the moment with a, a newborn baby in the house. And so um, I think it suits that style of photography. I don't think this would be great for sports photography, any kind of moving subjects, at least the way that I focus with it. Um, but for me, the portraits have just been amazing, particularly shooting at um, wide open apertures. This lens goes to f2. Some of the other Leica lenses go to f1.4 uh, or even 0.95. And so you're able to shoot in available light, low light, and have very um, narrow depth of field. And the, the portraits shot wide open with that narrow depth of field are quite magical. And that is that word that, that people have used to describe the camera, and that they really are. And the camera, the, the camera actually is producing images with beautiful colours. Um, some people say it slightly underexposes images. The blacks are so black, the colours are, are really beautiful. And I'm not really doing much post-production work on the images that it's producing because I actually think it gets it right in most cases. There have been a few occasions um, where I've had to do a little bit of post-production in Lightroom, but uh, more often than not, the images are really great. And when I'm sharing them online, people are saying, you know, one, what camera did you use to take that? I've never seen an image like that. And two, what work did you do to that camera to get it looking like, uh, to that photo to get it looking like that? And in most cases, I'm saying nothing. That's just the, the way this camera is shooting. So the selective, selective focus, that low depth of field, uh, is, is really beautiful in terms of the images that you're taking. But that will all come down to your style of, as a photographer and the, the type of shots that you're taking and perhaps the focal length that you choose in terms of a lens as well. A couple of things that I'm frustrated with in terms of this camera, I've already mentioned one, the LCD, not great. Um, going, pushing the ISI, uh, ISO too high, um, I'm finding anything over around 320 perhaps uh, is, is there's a lot of noise, um, particularly when you're blowing it up. If you're, if you're only using uh, small images, then you probably won't notice it, but certainly not great at high ISOs, and that's been one criticism of this camera. But when you're shooting at low ISOs, just beautiful, and the detail on the shots uh, are, are quite amazing. Um, apart from that, I think for me, um, I probably wouldn't choose this lens. I'd probably be looking at a 50mm lens, uh, particularly got my eye on the 1.4 um, or even the 0.95, although that's almost a $10,000 lens. So probably a little bit out of most people's budgets. Uh, but the f1.4 lenses are ones that um, I've had highly recommended to me as well. And they do make them in a variety of focal lengths. So all in all, would I buy this camera? I guess that's the question that a number of people have asked. And, uh, and I'm in two minds about it. It is beautiful, it's fun to use, it's fun to shoot with, it feels good in your hands. There are a few accessories that you can get to make it actually feel better in terms of a little thumb, um, thumb grip that you can get on it, um, a soft shutter release, which uh, apparently will give you an extra stop in terms of exposure. Um, there are a few things you can do with it, but really it's a, it's, it's, a, I think, a beautiful camera. I've had a lot of people come up to me and say, what is that camera? It looks really old. Um, so it kind of gets attention in that regard. But in terms of price, it really comes down to that. I guess it comes down to, one, whether you've got the money for it, two, the type of photography that you're doing. And, uh, yeah, they're the, probably the two things that are, I'm considering, at least. And in terms of type of photography, I think it kind of fits. In terms of budget, in two minds, and perhaps my wife is in, even in more of two minds, or maybe less, it's more one mind, she's probably thinking, no, it's not worth it. But uh, it's been fun to play with, um, and I will probably write a little bit more about it at the end of the two weeks that I have with this camera. I'm only four and a half days in at the moment, so this is certainly just a first impression review. We'd love to hear your opinion. Do you have an M9, an M9P like this one? Um, if so, what do you think of it? What do you love about it? What are you frustrated by with it? Uh, if you don't have it and you're a fan of some other type of camera, I'd love to hear your reaction to a camera of this uh, kind of specifications and price as well. What do you think uh, when it comes to term, comes um, to those sort of terms? So, love to hear your opinion on the M9P too.